Hello and welcome back. Today I want to look at how the Laplace function can be used in LTSpice to define the basic passive components, inductors, capacitors and resistors. I want to observe not just how fixed values can be attributed, but also frequency dependent values. So if you're curious, then keep watching. Although for the sake of convenience, in most applications, components are considered to have fixed values, in real life, the characteristic parameters of a component are more often than not variable. Common examples are temperature dependence, current or voltage dependence, and the topic of today, signal frequency dependence. Based on the frequency of the signal, the component will have a more or less different value compared to the reference measured under standard conditions. This becomes an important topic when the component's value is actually critical, like in a precise filter. So first off, the Laplace transform is a way of expressing a function in the frequency domain around the complex variable s. So any Laplace function will require the presence of this variable. And to keep things easy to understand, the help file also tells us that s can be replaced with the imaginary number i, so the square root of minus 1 times 2 times pi times the frequency. This can come in handy when trying to understand how various frequency dependent variations are included. Now the Laplace function can be used in various behavioral sources and even in the definition of some components, but today I will only be using it in G sources, so voltage dependent current sources. Now, although components using the Laplace definition can sometimes work in transient simulations, as is described in this article on filters, this is not always the case. Quite often, you will be running into various errors. However, in AC simulations, they work just fine since the applied signal frequency is well defined. So, without going into the details of the mathematics, the S domain equivalent impedances for a resistor, inductor, and capacitor are the following. You just have to trust me on this. So all of these expressions contain the component's value, the resistance, inductance, and capacitance, and S. Well, except of course for the resistor, where the impedance is independent of frequency. Now, since the G source generates a voltage-dependent current, if we divide the voltage by the impedance value, the current source will represent the component with the defined impedance. In other words, the way in which you can use the G source with the Laplace function is to simply set its input voltage to its own terminals and express the value as being 1 over impedance, where the impedance is defined based on whatever component you're trying to use. So the syntax that we will need will end up looking something like this, with the observation that since we really need to use S in the definition, for the resistor, we can simply multiply S by 0. Now, just to check out how this works, I created a few basic circuits in which a voltage source with a defined output impedance, so 50 ohms in all cases, is connected to a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor, all of which having some random value. And I also prepared the Laplace-based G-source equivalents of all of these components. So to confirm that this works, we can run the simulation and look at the signals present on the initial component but also on our Laplace based circuit. So for the resistor, we see the exact same thing. For the capacitor, again, the same result. And finally, for the inductor, by comparing the two, we see identical waveforms. So in all cases, both the magnitude and the phase was identical. Now, one thing to mention is that LTSpice offers two types of G sources. So you have the G and the G2, and the difference being which is the positive and which is the negative input terminal in reference to the current. So these are swapped around based on which source you are selecting. Now, in my case, I use the G2 type of source just to have the positive current input pin on the same side as the positive voltage input pin. In case you get this wrong, you will see an inverted phase behavior between the basic component and the G source equivalent. So just to show this off, we can look at the capacitor circuit. So starting from our reference with the capacitor component, we can compare it to our G2 source 
where we have the exact same response, and then with the G1 source, where the input terminals are swapped around, we see the same magnitude response, but an inverted phase response. Now, normally, this sort of problem will not be a huge issue, it's just something to keep in mind. So this is quite a nice way to make your life really complicated. Replace the basic components with a voltage-dependent current source with a complex definition. But let's now look at how we can do something actually useful and also make these components frequency-dependent. Well, first, we need to have a clear picture of how our parameter of interest is frequency-dependent. One common example is with wire resistance. As frequency increases, you get skin effect, which changes the wire's resistance proportionally to the square root of frequency. The exact relationship is dependent on the various constructive characteristics of the wire, but for simplicity, we can replace all of that by a constant k. So the total resistance value will be the fixed dc value plus this frequency-dependent bit. So to model this, we can create a spice equivalent where we take advantage of how s is equal to 2 times pi times frequency times i. So from here, we can extract the parameter frequency, and well, if we want to remove the imaginary bit, we can use the absolute value of s. And if we need the square root of frequency, well, we just put everything under the square root, and we get this thing. Knowing the frequency to value relationship and the equivalent s domain impedance, we can combine everything and create our equivalent Laplace function that we can use in the stimulator. So just to exemplify this, first I created a couple G source based resistors where the value is once equal to the frequency and once equal to the square root of frequency. So I used the definitions we previously discussed and just inverted it to get the final resistor value. So we can run the simulation just to confirm that this works. We can extract the value of the resistance by dividing the voltage by the current. And while plotting on a logarithmic scale, we can see that for our initial circuit, so the one where R is equal to F, the resistance value, so this one divided by the current, is rising at the same time in resistance as is the frequency. And while for the other value, so for the second source, the resistance value is rising at the rate of the square root of our frequency. So for example, the square root of 10 kilohertz is 100. Now, to look at the model of a piece of wire, we can create something similar to what we've discussed. So to have the resistance equal to some initial constant and add on top a frequency dependent extra element. So this would be the equivalent Laplace based G source for this formula. And well, if we simulate this, and again, we extract the resistance out of the current, we can see the typical behavior of a wire impacted by skin effect. So the resistance stays constant up until some frequency value, after which the resistance will slowly increase at the rate equal to the square root of frequency. Now, of course, these are just some basic examples, but you can use this sort of method to create far more complex and accurate models. As long as you have the mathematical frequency dependent expression, it's not that difficult to add it into the circuit simulator. So one interesting model I came across is the Coilcraft equivalent model for inductors. I will leave a link to this in the description, of course, but long story short, these models take into account the frequency dependence of the wire, the frequency dependence of core loss, and also the frequency dependence of the actual inductance. So in this article, they detail the basic mathematical model, as well as show off the SPICE implementation. So for the model, they use the G-source implementation that we discussed today. So based on your needs, you might find the component model already made in Coilcraft's library, since this sort of model is used in some of their RF inductors. Now, one of the things to keep in mind though, is that the frequency behavior of a parameter will not be linear or easy to model. One example is the typical characteristic curve of the permeability of a magnetic material. So you have your real permeability and then your imaginary permeability, and none of these is an easy to model function. So in general, the real permeability will stay flat up until a point, after which it slightly rises and then it plummets, and then you have some other function for the imaginary permeability. 
Now, you can probably find a mathematical function that covers this, but the other thing that you could do is just divide the behavior into regions and define a model that covers only a restricted frequency interval. In general, when looking in detail into the simulation models of passive components, the initial description will usually specify the frequency interval where the model is valid. So the model is not valid for every single frequency, but rather a restricted interval. Now, there are a lot of frequency dependent phenomena that could be useful if simulated correctly. However, as with any simulation model, the more complex the model becomes, the slower the simulator will run. You will always have to keep a balance between complexity and actual necessity. With that said though, hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, there are more videos on my channel that you can check out. And if you want to be up to date with my latest releases, also consider subscribing. And well, see you next time. Bye bye.